Willie dropped a video today uh, asking the question, was I right or wrong about phase one of Classic WoW? So let's see what Willie has. This is his phase one retrospective video. Let's see what he has to say about this. I'm going to full screen this. Uh, Just play. before Season of Discovery there dropped, we go. I made a big video going over class predictions for Phase 1. As of okay. right now, we are well over a month into the season, with Phase 2 expected to drop towards late January or possibly early Feb. So he made this video before the announcement that it is going to be February 8th. So I thought, okay. why not do a bit of a recap, a snapshot of the state of Season of Discovery okay. at level 25 as it currently is, and to take a look at which classes have really come out on top, given everything that we now know about the season. Because so far for me, there has definitely been a few surprises which I did not expect. But we will talk about each class, what I expect. Surprise! Warriors and rogues are on top of the damage meters every single raid, every single dungeon. Surprise! It's crazy! Like I know! Happened. And of course, why things are currently the way they are. Keep in mind there will of course be new runes released with Phase 2, and at the moment we don't know how many runes or new rune engraving slots there will be. It may well be the case that the best classes in Phase 1 keep getting better, or we could see a big meta shift. So I wouldn't read too hard into this as to which class will be the best for the whole season. We simply don't that is know true. that. Also, Blizzard is doing active class balancing this season as well. It could be the case you're... They really are. They're changing stuff every week. Buff ...and changes quite dramatically before the end of Phase 1. This is kind of how WoW looks when we don't know everything in advance for once. But, let's take a look back at which classes are topping DPS meters, dominating PvP, and calling the shots. And which ones leave a bit to be desired still. It's time All right. to take a look back and see All how right. right or wrong I was about classes in Phase Here we 1 go. of Season of Discovery. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor, Boot.dev. What is it? Boot.dev is Boot a platform that equips self-motivated individuals with the tools that they need to forge you can a learn Python and development. Boot.dev's learning process is a little bit different, though, and with the aim of keeping things fresh and interesting, they treat it. Now you can learn to code. Everyone says, learn to code. Now you can learn to code. Like a real-life RPG, where as you progress, you earn <clears throat> things such as experience, achievements, and you can even go on to compete for places on a leaderboard versus others. On this platform, oh, wow. you'll be getting to grips with both Python and Go programming languages. Chat, I, I am not a coder. I have no idea. What is the most valuable coding language? If you could pick one language to be proficient at, what would the language be? And most importantly, boot.dev will be encouraging C++, you to write okay. and understand your own code and okay. not just be doing things in theory or from a book. Doing for me has always been key to learning and fully understanding something, and you just can't beat first-hand experience in the process of trial and error when it comes to really getting information to stick. There's even a community... Uh, for function or for amazingness or profit, if I want to code myself an AI girlfriend... What language do I use? Power going back. It is not yet. Uh, th thank, thank you, Java. If I'm trying to code myself a virtual girlfriend, which one do I use? Python? Really? Re hold up. Is, is this some sort of misogynistic remark? Are you, are you likening women to snakes? Are you guys are you guys only saying Python because you're some sort of misogynist or something like that? What's the deal here? Discord to compare progress and ask for cool help it. when you start advancing onto some of the more complicated problems. And you can start all this today at your own okay. pace. So click the link in the <clears> description <throat> box below and use my code Will E to get twenty five percent off your I'm first use payment it. for Boot.dev. I'm That's using the code. Twenty five percent your first month or your first year depending on the subscription that you choose. Many thanks okay. to boot.dev for the sponsor today. Let's get back to WoW. Here As we go. As tradition with these videos, I like starting with the cloth wearers and rotating through the different armor types. So today All right, here we, we go. will begin with Total the priest. Recap. I expected the priest's healer identity to remain just overall good, whilst expecting Shadow to struggle in the- Uh, yeah, okay, so Shadow sucks. It seems like every single good raid has one priest. Every single pre-made wants like two or three priests. They're insane PvP healers. Penance is awesome. This early phase of the season. Shadow priests suck. I'd say that's been largely true. <clears throat> the bit that could use some emphasis though is just really how good priest healers have been in PvP. 
I don't know if you've tried much Warsong Gulch yet, but PvP doesn't mean player versus player in Season of Discovery. What it really it's means priest is priest, priest versus priest, and yeah. the side with more priests tends to win. As that a healer, is true. they are also incredibly mana efficient, have the only defensive magical dispel, and thanks to a few undocumented changes from Blizzard's end on damage dealt in battlegrounds, they are just kind of impossible to solve for any class. A war song without priests versus two or more on the enemy team is playing such an uphill battle when you want to win. On the PvE side of things, we all thought priests would be great at healing, and uh -huh. hey, what do you know? Turns out they're still pretty good. They have such a well-rounded toolkit of heals really that the few extra abilities they got from runes only push them further and make them... It seems like every single good speedrun in Black Fathom Deeps is having one priest and then one, like, like AoE healing slash damage mage is what they're doing that much better. One thing that's become noticeable for this class in this season, however, is how powerful the homunculi rune the really homunculi. is. Pre-launch, I was speculating this rune would basically serve as a generic rune to provide tank debuffs, because none of the new tanking specs can apply your typical attack speed slows, sunder, demo shout, and so on. It turns yep. out that's exactly what homunculi mm -hmm. does, but it does it far more efficiently than any tank does it as well. In fact, Homunculi's Sunder Armor effect reduces a boss's armor by over 1,000 and is applied instantly if or when they actually decide to hit the correct target. And this is better Jeez. than what a warrior can do if they spend 5 globals on Sundering. This will be because the Homunculi debuff is scaled to level 25, which means this rune is going to be bis forever for priests in PvE, whatever your specialization. Oh and yes, people are taking this rune over Prayer of Mending as a healer, because the debuff is just so overpowered. For Shadow, I expected it to That's be wild. behind other DPS, and it is by a lot. Many of the It's not just behind. Like this is This is crazy. It's a, it's a, it's actually so bad that it is shocking that Blizzard has not buffed this. They've spent they've spent a lot of time, you know, tweaking other classes to make them worse. They've nerfed Hunter like six times. I, as far as I know, there hasn't been a single buff for Shadow Priests. Yo, I don't even play Shadow Priest. Buff the Shadow Priests, man. What the hell? The runes even got it's just sad into the season too, but it really hasn't made too much of a difference in PvE. <clears throat> in the past, I put this down to them missing a bunch of talents, which could add up to 40% damage or more for them. But okay. right now, I'm not convinced that this will be enough to escape the bottom of the meters. The age-old issue for Shadow Priest in vanilla is that they scale with one stat, more or less. Spell power. And yeah. not very well at that. And this old issue is coming round to haunt them once again. The DPS priest identity needs some help through runes in phase 2 in my opinion. On the PvP side of things, there is kind of a shadow priest build I suppose, but it's more of a hybrid at the moment. And it's really hard to play priest in PvP and not want to be a healer with how good they are at that. Though as it's the insane. usual priests are very good in 1v1s and add good group utility to battleground PvP settings. Onto the mage, what I like to call the hero class. Class of Dude, mages are busted. Okay, can we have a quick conversation about how strong mages are? Have you guys seen some of these AOE pulls mages are doing inside these dungeons and they're and they're boosting other players, bro? It is it is like disgusting. It is disgusting. Nella, how how good this class on? is. Starting with arcane, I expected the like Blizzard, Bl like they act they actually said, yo. We know when classic wild mages are really good and that they can AoE farm monsters and they can they've been dungeon boosting people for the last four years, we know. So what we're gonna do is make it so uh yeah, yeah, we're gonna make it so while they're AoEing, as they normally do, it also heals them. That's what we're gonna do. And it's just like Yo, what? Like, what the f- what? Healer identity huh? to be incredibly overpowered, thanks to no reduction on heals from AoE effects. And Blizzard did massively nerf the healing from- Meanwhile, meanwhile, by the way, I will note, if you're a Warlock and you want to have the top AoE DPS, you cast Hellfire. What does Hellfire do? It literally kills yourself. Yo, mages, your best AoE, it's gonna- it's gonna not only can you cast it while moving, because it instant casts, it's Arcane Explosion, but it also heals you. And it- and it does four times more damage than Hellfire. Warlocks, if you want the top AoE meters, if you want to do the best AoE, here's what you do. Stand still, kill yourselves. Uh, alright, okay, I guess I will. I guess I will. From Arcane okay. Explosion, not too long after launch. Okay. So that was in part solved. Awesome. The living flame ability is allowing mages to do some truly mage-like things. People are already okay. AOE farming hundreds of elites in dungeons and boosting as well. 
you really just can't keep this class from doing degenerate things, can you? In the no, you can't. The heals again, as expected, they no. aren't doing quite as well on single. T this class needs to be deleted from the game. Like, we, we have tried everything else. We've tried peaceful solutions. Violence is the only answer. This entire class needs to be deleted from the entire game. Okay. compared to other healers but get it out the rage get it spy. out of here or at least i've seen it off since the world buff gives three percent spell hit and seen some of the bosses don't have crazy arcane spell resist anymore for damage arcane is good enough as well it seems like a go-to spec when you've just dinged in a bit of less gear and it's even received mm -hmm. a buff not long ago we are living flame can now benefit from your arcane blast stacks Fire, though, has been the breakout That's success insane. in Phase 1 for Mages. This one definitely came as wow. a surprise. Typically, Fire Mages need a whole bunch of crit to really start coming online. But thanks to a ton of bonus spell power on gear, the burnout rune, and being able to get ignite early, mm -hmm. they're doing better than expected, especially in the raid. Whilst fire will always have higher variance due to needing to crit, with some good Whoa. RNG, it can be well up there on DPS meters. The letdown for the phase, however, has been frost. It's straight up the worst PvE spec in the game by a big old margin. And yeah, it suffers, bad. as several really other specs do, with a bit of an unforeseen floor of Season of Discovery. Spell yeah. ranks. So the best... Yeah, spell ranks will kneecap you. Now, the deal is, if you have a rune, runes always necessarily scale to your level. So if you're, if like, if Frostbolt rank 4 is, uh, you get it at level 20 or maybe 22, well, you're 25. Okay, and the, and the ability that you're spamming is a level 22 ability, so that sucks. But if you have if if your if your spam if your main ability is a rune, right, like a warlock with incinerate, well, you're casting what is effectively a level 25 ability. That's pretty good. That's the big difference. Best rank of frostbolt you can get at the moment is a learned mm -hmm. level 20, and it just doesn't do that much damage. Your next rank would have been at 26, and it does about 80% yeah, more the damage problem. baseline. And for runes you have isolance, but you can only get- Yo, his name is Dumbass. Yo, like, is this a joke? I never saw this. The, the, the master mage of the game is called Maginor Dumbass. Yeah, that makes sense. That that makes total sense. That is true. Yes. At one point, that's the, the best mage. Talent. So essentially, Mr. Dumbass Foster just isn't a thing at the moment. It's still <laughs> got good enough utility in PvP, but the damage from this spec just isn't there. I expect Frost to see big improvements <clears throat> next phase for PvP, but if Fire is already better yep. at 25. I think you're going to be playing fire for a oh, very he's long doing time. It. Overall, mages are in a good place in PvE, <laughs> but due to a lack of defensives and frost damage just not being very good, they currently are not the strongest in PvP. No mages should have a lack of defensives and also a lack of offensives. That's my opinion. Next is Warlock, my main class. And Warlock Here we go. Is definitely <sighs> hyping up pre-launch, and I'm happy to say it has not disappointed. Warlock has turned awesome. out so far to be a very powerful pick in all... You know, I will tell you, um, Metamorphosis is disappointing. It's not, it's not really that good at tanking. And it, it's, it's, not, it's not the best thing in PvP. If you're, if you're, if you're PvPing, you would rather be Affliction. And if you're tanking, you'd rather not be tanking. You'd rather just have a Shaman or, or some, someone else tank. Like, Meta is not the best tank. I, I find myself... Like and and it's it's it sucks because it's so cool it's awesome it feels so cool to to play, but it's just not. The, it's just not that good at anything. When you re when you really sit down and look at the performance, it's not that good at anything. It's not. It is. It is. It is good for soloing dungeons. If you want to go solo whaling caverns and farm gold and whaling caverns or something, okay, yeah, you can solo dungeons. But like, no, no one really wants a meta tank for a raid. I hate to say it. I hate to say. All areas of content for this phase. Perhaps its weakest identity though is for tanking, and that's mainly just to a lack of AoE threat options, but it's not the yeah, only tank that's to have the problem. this problem. In PvP though, the Metamorphosis spec kind of hard counters everything that does physical damage. You actually just straight up can't fight them. It's like trying to... Well, I mean like, here, here's the deal, okay? Meta, meta hard counters everything that is physical, but then gets owned by all the casters. But if you're Affliction, then you just counter all of it. Like, you, you just counter all the casters and the physical. Like, like affl affliction, oh, affliction just owns. It, it, affliction might be the number one uh, dual spec in the game right now. In, fa in fact, I would bet money that it is. So any, any argument you would make to PvP as meta, it's like, just play Affliction and it's even, it's even better. 
it's even better than that, right? Break through a brick wall with a spoon, <laughs> but the wall also heals for more damage than you can deal. On the PvE Ooh. side of things, Lox are the top caster at the moment thanks to a destruction build yep. running Incinerating yep. Chaos Vault, and they stand to get a whole lot of extra bonus fire damage from talents once we hit phase 2 as well. And I'm just saying, Hellfire, despite not being able to crit in vanilla, is going to be dealing some nasty damage, both to enemies and the Warlock themselves. Unfortunately, every spec involving yep. Shadow Bolt is bad because we have the same problem Frost Mages do, and that our last rank we learned was at level 20. I really want Shadow Bolt Volley to work. Maybe next phase we can give it another go. As for the... So, yeah, this is what I'm thinking, uh, and I don't know, I'd have to check. If, if, like, if like the final rank of Shadow Bolt is level 58, it will necessarily be worse than any, any Incinerate build. Because Incinerate will be default level 60, a level 60 spell, whereas the Shadow Bolt max rank would be level 58. And so I don't know, but, but the, and, this, and this point would extend for any other caster ability. If Frost Bolt, the final rank, is level 56, but you have some rune that you can spam instead, it would be it would be better, right? Something to think about as we continue leveling. Affliction-centric builds they are amazing for leveling, as expected. Mm -hmm. This class has practically no downtime at all. Mm -hmm. Once you have Master Channeler and Haunt, because they just heal for so much, you can always a life tap your mana back. I've been really happy with the Warlock so far in Season of Discovery, and I hope it remains strong into Phase Two, and that other casters can move up a little think bit it will. more to where their think power it will. level is at. Onto the Leather Enjoyers Druid first. I just Ooh. got done leveling my Druid and was balanced the whole way and would you believe it that balance is now probably one of the strongest levelers in the game now balance that is, is awesome. a big change from vanilla where the spec was kind of just mean work. it's it's fun to play but the the pve damage if you're raiding is not so good it's not so good but i'm i'm i have this copium that balance is going to be awesome at level 40 you've got boomkin ability you've got like you can actually become a boomkin you get a bunch of cool talents between level 25 and 40 so i'm i'm I've got Copium, then it's going to be good at 40, maybe. Worthy. Balance can now cast Wrath for free thanks to a rune, picks up yep. Sunfire early, which is just a better version of Moonfire, and most importantly has Star Surge. Star Surge received a 182% damage buff quite early into the season, <clears throat> as well as having its mana cost reduced to practically nothing. Seriously, a druid on about 5% mana versus a druid on about 100% mana are at about 90% of their regular power because Star Surge is absolutely crazy it's arguably it's one of the best runes in the game in terms of what it does a huge single target nuke it's got a short cooldown scales it's amazing good. with spell power and costs a tiny amount of mana you can technically go and get this rune at level one as well though it's probably going to involve i summoned myself to get this rune at level one i got star surge at level one on my druid and when i went back to my level like i, I got the rune and then i hearthed back to my starter zone in mulgore Every star surge was one shotting mobs. Every every six seconds, I was one shotting a mob. It, it it was it was actually wild. It was it was it was awesome. It was wild and awesome. Of a few corpses. And then it falls off, of course, right? It's at level ten, no problem. And I recommend that you go out of your way to get it too. It completely changes the class. Star Surge also makes Balanced Druids a nightmare in PvP, as they can just kite you around in circles and remove about a quarter of your health every six seconds with an instant yep. cast spell. So you're probably yep. thinking, damn, this spec's amazing in PvE then too, and uh, no, it's still not really. Yes, no. Star Surge and Sunfire are great, but outside of that, you're back to casting vanilla spells, and that's not what you want to be doing. That's Boomies a problem. Boomies have a bunch of solid talents to pick up in Phase 2, but I think they need a little more than that to really pick themselves up in PvE. Resto Druids have been a bit of a surprise so far, you know. I wasn't expecting anything too crazy from Druid healers, but it turns out that Wild Growth is pretty insane. At least in PvE, that is. You have Druids out okay. there beating Ooh, Greece wow. while just pressing this one button the second the best raid, and the rest of your heals are still... Uh, not so good to be honest. Almost tied with priest. Is nice to bring in PVE for sure. For PVP, it's kind of like priest in that you're a bit of. Still, though, like okay, guys, ba back to the discussion about ten man versus twenty man raids. If you if you have a ten man raid and you're trying to min max a ten man raid, you you only have how can I put this? Um, like you you don't have enough spots in the raid to bring the second best healer, 
And so you're always just going to bring the best healer, which is priest. Does this make sense? Like you don't have room in the raid to bring the second or third best DPS class. You're only going to have room to bring the first or second best DPS class. Does this make sense? And so, but, but if you have a 20 man raid, then it's like, okay, we get, we get this utility out of a boomkin. Whereas other, if was otherwise, if it was a 10 man raid, we would, we would never, not a boomkin, like a resto druid. We would never bring a resto druid, but because we've got 20 people, we can, we can actually, uh, like we can, it, it, it makes sense to bring a resto. It makes sense to bring the second best healer. It makes sense to bring the third or fourth best DPS. Whereas if you've got a 10 man raid, you have so few slots to work with. You're super incentivized. Okay. We're going to, we're going to bring what is absolutely best of a hybrid dealing damage and healing as well <laughs> and you probably should be just because of how good star surge is feral seems to be Ooh. doing just fine too i will say i don't see too many feral tanks but their single target threat yoke came in thank you for the five gifted subs thank you very very much i appreciate that dude thank seems you seems to much. be fine even though they are lacking on the aoe front if they get a decent aoe rune next phase they will start to come online big time though ferals have also been the only way to get wind fury this phase so it's a good job they're actually Gotta have doing a feral. well beyond just being used thank for you this thank rune you. i'd say they're doing better in pve than pvp but can be strong for both areas of the game it's a pretty straightforward playstyle too with mangle into savage raw and you better believe all the melee out there want wind fury so you're always yeah. going to have a raid spot on top of that you have a bunch to look forwards to next phase with automatic crowd pummeler and wolf's head helm too druids have been a big winner feral druids are are probably going to be insane they're going to be insane in phase two they're going to be wild in phase of two. this phase in my opinion i know we're level 25 but typically druid is either a healer or a flank carrier in vanilla and now instead of just that, every single one of their identities is doing something cool, so that's something to be happy about. Up next is the Rogue, and it's the first ult I made for Season Rogue. of Discovery. The reason I wanted to try them out was to see if it's as bad as everyone says they are for leveling. It really wasn't, but I did have gold to buy some greens for them, so that's uh -huh. probably why. And the second reason is because Rogues were doing far better than expected in terms of- Still to this day, we are six, maybe seven weeks into Season of Discovery. I have never once met a rogue tank. I've never, I've never even seen one. I've never, I've never, e they, they might as well not exist. I've never met one. Never even seen it. Of DPS. I mean, even in PVP, I, I don't thought know. this class I don't was going to be pretty average. Turns out they're also very good in that area of the game. And this is without some of their key abilities, such as cheap shot, kidney shot, and blind. If a rogue gets on top of you and applies crippling poison, it's honestly a hard fight for the majority of the classes in the game to win because Rogue just does a lot of damage. In PvE, they're a bit of a damage over time class, strangely enough, with Saber Slash and Deadly Ooh. Poison. The Deadly Brew Rune also underwent huge changes pre-launch, which answered every concern I had with Rogue Poisons. So okay. not only do Poisons now scale with your attack power, you essentially have instant poison and deadly poison on both your weapons as well as still being able to get wind fury on your main hand and using a weapon stone on your off hand oh and you can still enchant your weapons too it's actually four separate weapon buffs per Dude, weapon gee, as a rogue geez. no wonder they're doing well when you think about it like that and with talents yeah that's wild blade flurry and adrenaline rush next phase i'm expecting this class to continue Wow, wow, look at this. Wow, this is crazy. This is this is so different than how vanilla WoW always used to be. Continue blasting wow, on single target. It's and totally being different. Cleave. Rogue tank is actually doing fine as well, mainly in the raid is it? though. See, trash in the raid is kind of just go pull it and it borderline doesn't need a proper tank because it just doesn't do any damage. And rogues on single target threat are amazing. So they're well suited to the boss fights in BFD, which are just kind of single target, to be honest. In yep. dungeons, though, where you only have one healer and the vast majority of pulls are multiple enemies, they still have the predicted issues of controlling multiple mobs, especially yep. when your dynamite cooldown isn't up. Rogues overall, though, exceeded expectations this phase. Very solid class. Next up would have been the male wearers, but they're still wearing leather this phase, so we'll carry on like that. But we no have male the for Shaman. You. Shaman tank has been a huge success story in Season of Discovery so far. Very tanky, great single target threat, good AoE threat, 
hat and they bring that standard shaman utility. You can even just pop shaman on the tank tanks seem PvP really good, and you become really hard for most classes to solo. I do need to play more horde this season so I can check <clears> out the revamp shammy myself firsthand. But so far from what I've seen, having a shaman tank in your group has only ever been a good thing. Rest pretty much, also yeah. Doing that's pretty my much experience. What's expected in that it's just doing okay. Expect to power up quite a bit at level 40 by which time you'll have chain heal and don't forget overload got buffed to a 50 percent chance and it can proc off this spell so that's going to be pretty powerful enhancement has been the only melee class fight dude phase two is going to be awesome oh my god we're going to be dude we're going to be farming scarlet monastery we're going to be doing no more dude phase two is going to be awesome and in themselves it's going to be awesome. lower down on the dps meters this phase and recently their dual wield spec room was buffed up to a huge plus 10 percent hit chance and it still hasn't made too much of a difference. I think you really want to see another rune that deals direct damage for enhancement next phase. As cool as Storm Strike is, it's just one extra attack which doesn't do a whole lot of damage. You need a bit more than that. Oh, and of course, don't forget there's very likely going to be a two-handed rune as well once we're getting towards 40. So I'm yeah, hopeful to probably. see some improvements for the Wind Fury enjoyers. Elemental suffers from yep. the same problem Mages do with Frostbolt and Warlocks do with Shadow Bolt. Your Lightning Bolt, your main filler spell, is unfortunately bad because it's the rank you learned at level 20. You also have a ton oh of my god, that missing sucks. too, such as bonus crit damage and cast time reductions. Lava Burst is the star of the show here though, but similar to Balanced Druids, your one overpowered rune isn't enough to carry your damage in PvE nope. content, and as a result they're on the lower end of things. They're good in PvP though, they have Purge, Totems, Frost Shock, and of course Lava Burst, all those make for a good utility pick, and Shamans just never seem to die until their mana bar is spent either this spec stands to see some huge do i know if the new runes are still going to be for the one legs and shit oh i think i think they'll be on a new slot the new runes improvements next new slot though, is my guess from talents and better spell ranks in fact runes aside because who knows what we're getting elemental should be one of the most improved specs between 25 and 40 next for the classes which i think are so still wearing leather is the hunter this is the most nerfed class in the season and it's still and yet it's still insane so powerful they just can't get it right priest, this is probably the best pvp class in the game i mean i thought they would be good i had them just behind warlock in my pre-release video ranking but they are better than i ever imagined uh yeah guys okay who who wins who wins snuts on a warlock or snuts on a hunter uh Pro probably snuts on a hunter. It turns out when you start yeah, probably. pet scale with your gear, and you add a rune that gives your pet a ton more damage and focus regeneration, hunters become pretty broken. Early on, players found that Scorpid's poison was scaling way too well with gear, and your pet yes, would it was. legitimately do more damage than most other classes in the game could. Yeah. Blizzard eventually got around to nerfing that one. Then players yeah, started good. taming Wind Serpents, whose lightning breath is pretty much like having an elemental shaman as a pet, yeah. but one that actually does damage. This is still yeah. usable, by the way. In fact, you can solo most other classes in the game just by using Eyes of the Beast on Why have they not done something about this? So how can he keep getting away with it? He can't keep getting away with it. Your pets, because they do so much damage. Your pet is so powerful, you don't even need to leave its growl effect on. It will just keep threats because it will be out damaging you by so much. From a solo play perspective, this is the strongest class in the game by a mile. It even makes Warlock look average in comparison. Pretty much okay. the only issue is that okay. Hunters are the only pure DPS spec left in the game and are also overplayed at the moment because they're just kind of OP and it doesn't take too long to get to level 25. Yeah. Also, the Beast Mastery spec doesn't really yeah. add much to your Hunter gameplay and it does feel a lot like vanilla it's just your pets carrying really hard now there is also a marksmanship yeah. spec that's performing well for hunters too which leans into you actually pressing some new buttons instead of just sending in your pet to delete what's ever on your screen i can't yep. wait to see how crazy pets get at level 40 once we get bestial wrath by this level oh my god yeah, that's what we need. Bestial Wrath. That's what we need. Yeah. Pets will all have their own sprint type ability too. Yeah. So it will be completely impossible to get off. Your yeah, MVP. that's are awesome. Get even harder than they already are by Wind Serpents. Or who knows by. Du oh, dude. Dude, what if there's a rune called Demonic Wrath? that makes your demon do like 100% bonus damage and it's like an offensive cooldown and it lasts. Dude, 
what if what if playing demo was viable what if playing demo and actually having a demon it's like okay increases damage done by the demon and also reduces all damage taken by the demon by like 90 percent. so then so then your succubus or your fell hunter is not just going to die mid raid to some dumb aoe and then there's also a rune that lets you summon a fell guard yo fell guard and demonic wrath rune Yes, awesome, dude. Uh, what else? Gorillas, maybe next yes. phase. All in all, hunters are doing great as expected, but beast mastery is even outperforming where I thought it would be. <laughs> Finally, we're on to the male wearers. Paladin, Jeez. I would say, has very much met expectations. It was one of my top picks heading into the season, and I believe back then every spec would be viable and performing well. Paladins are slapping in PvP. I would say they are. Has been true, though. Protection isn't quite full-on protection paladin yet as two-handed ret tanking is fine for most content. Divine Storm double dips from threats from both its healing and damage, making it incredibly efficient. And Consecration just isn't super worth investing points into the Holy Tree yet. Mm -hmm. Its mana cost for what it does isn't too attractive. Avenger Shield is powerful, but you can just macro swap to a shield, throw it out, and then go back to two-handed blasting. Ret yeah. itself has seen some huge yep. improvements to how it was in vanilla and feels far more engaging. Crusader is pumping. And Divine Storm really have made all of the difference. I will say I've leveled a ret to 25 myself, and not gonna lie, I was disappointed that you couldn't seal twist between martyrdom and command. In PvE, rets aren't quite keeping up with They should have made the Crusader Strike rune available at level 60. They should have said, hey, Red Paladins and Season of Discovery, we've heard your feedback. We are going to give you the Crusader Strike rune once you get to level 60. That would have been funny. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> Most melee. And if they could do this, it would be a nice single target damage buff. Then again, I find that people love or hate seal twisting, and you would need a separate pair of gloves to put Divine Storm on for AoE, or just manually swap it outside of combat. In PvP, rep pallies are monsters, and as predicted, can absolutely global you in a hammer of justice. They yeah, also they bring can. a ton of utility they hit and really should hard. just be getting better and better. I can't wait to see some good old reckoning bombs stacking one shots next phase as well. Holy Pally is doing okay, kind of in a similar place to Resto Shaman. I wasn't expecting them to be too crazy at 25 due to missing a lot of talents and spell ranks, but they're fine to have in the raid. For PvP though, they tend to be pretty vulnerable to getting locked down at the moment, and you probably want to look at playing rat which means we end on what yeah. was the most yeah. popular class in the game back in 2019 what a sick a twist class which i thought was going to be pretty average at level 25 well it nope. turns out even without berserker stance or the majority of their important talents or abilities warrior is still the best dps in the game okay yeah. for real though the fact warriors yeah. are the best at level 25 proves how unbelievably broken this class really is in this game now yeah. to be fair pre-release we didn't know how good all the gear from bfd was going to be dude i really hope warrior is like the worst dps class at level 60 i and and the reason why it's not it's not out of spite i'm not being vindictive it's just that they deserve it they just fucking deserve it they deserve to suck they deserve those people those warrior mains they deserve to suck they deserve it. They think they're so great. They think they're so awesome. They think they're just God's gift to the rest of the world. They deserve to suck, okay? Suck it, suck it. And we've seen improvements week to week as the highly gear dependent warriors gradually begin to scale up. Also, Blizzard have done a rather unvanilla like thing in BFD in creating uh -huh. a lot of loot which has appropriate stats for its armor type. And on Horde, if you play Warrior, uh -huh. you do not have loot competition for male at 25. And I'm assuming if they follow this design choice at level 40, you won't have competition for plate armor either. On Alliance, there are paladins to compete, but I've never really considered yep. armor type for gearing in vanilla before because i mean tons of the bis items were always leather and now you can play what is eventually the best dps in the game and have no competition for rolling on armor assuming yeah. you're the only warrior in the raid that is which isn't too unlikely in 10-man groups at the moment so yeah the population for the warrior class is going to absolutely explode heading later on into phase one and especially in phase two we you gotta do something me about on that this one slide at blizzcon about making everyone open yeah so this was a lie so our independent fact checkers inside of the Pentagon have determined that this meme 
was a fucking lie. P instead of making warriors a less OP. Yeah, still got a bit of work to go on that one. Yeah. In PvP, warriors are currently okay as well, but as per usual, you need a healer behind you. But your lack of mortal strike can make it difficult to take down equally geared players. Once you hit 40 though, and are in fully well itemized plate armor, which you probably will be, this class will be yep. completely unstoppable with a good healer behind them. Tank warriors are decent too. Can't say I've seen too many of them personally, but they seem to have good single target threats, solid AoE, and with the new runes, actually fairly decent damage. Blizzard also wants tank warriors to properly rock a shield as well this season, which is something new as well. That's good. Warriors That's really have good. Though. Snatched victory from the jaws of defeat and have at this early stage of the season still risen to the top for dealing damage with notable. I, I always thought that that dual wield tanking, which was the meta, right? I always thought that was thematically very stupid. I understand. I understand it's meta. I get. I get that. I get that it was the best thing to do for for threat. But like thematically, it's dumb, right? If you're if you're tanking, you want to have a shield. You want to be wearing a shield. That's cool. Like that's the that's the that's the tank identity. Have a shield on. Help from wild strikes, homunculi and some pretty overpowered weapons. I thought warriors would scale up by level 40, but even now, they seem to be doing just fine. They are still very they are, dependent, uh, though, they are number you do one. need a raid comp which really enables you to perform. And that is the meta snapshot for Season of Discovery Phase 1 so far. Yeah. Again, things are always subject to change, but this phase may be the only time we get to see this level 25 meta for a while to come. So I thought, why not put a video together to get down how things have really played out so far. So, let me know your thoughts, how you feel about your class and Season of Discovery. There you go! And what you'd like to see change in the future. Now you know. Down below. And as always, thank you all so much for watching and listening in. And I'll see you all in the next one very soon. And if you don't know, now you know, my gamer. Here's another great Willy video. Awesome. You guys should go like and uh, subscribe to that video. There you go.